Poster, social media posts, menu, newsletter, image editing, brochures, presentations, resumes, business cards, memes. It seems like Adobe Express does it all. Let's get started and I'll teach you guys how to use this wonderful tool so that we can do everything super quick. We're gonna learn to do something like this all the way from background image to effects. So let's do this. The first thing I'm gonna go over is these quick actions. What they've basically done is take these actions that we use a lot, like remove background, like cropping simple images, resizing images from things like Photoshop, and they put it online so that we can access it a lot easier. So just to give you guys an example, um, if I click on the remove background right here, and all I have to do is just add an image in, so pretend I choose this image right here, it's gonna analyze the image itself and it's gonna help me remove the background. So there you go. And what I can do is I can either download it by clicking download, it'll go into your download folder, or I can straight up open it in editor where I can basically start editing this image. But before we get into that, let me go over some of the other ones. So some of these include resizing your image, converting it to GIF, cropping image, trimming video, generating QR codes. So these ones are very intuitive and they don't need too much of an explanation. They basically just kind of took uh, what we use the most from Adobe Acrobat, Photoshop, Premiere, and put it online so that it's easy to use for everybody. Here's a snapshot of everything that's available when we are looking at these quick actions. They even put the Adobe Firefly, which is their native AI, and that function into these quick actions as well. So check this out for sure. Now there's only really three ways to start uh, with any of your projects. Number one is of course, any of the templates that you can use. Number two is starting from scratch. And number three is somewhere in between where you use generative AI to begin. If you find anything that we're about to go over super interesting, then go get yourself your Adobe subscription and support the channel. It's affiliate link down in the description and students get like 60% off, so just do it. The first one is the probably the easiest one. If you just mouse over any of these, you can browse the templates and use any of these ones by simply clicking on them. All of these elements are editable, so you can go ahead and edit this to your heart's content. In addition, you can go down to the left. This is all the things that you've been working on. You can go to explore, and you can see all the different templates, and you can explore all the various forms of templates down here. The other way to do this, I'm gonna go back into the front page here. The other way to do this is to simply create from scratch. So if I create something from scratch, it'll tell us to upload from the bar on the left here. And we can do that by uploading an image onto the background. Also, we can choose from this bar on the left. So for example, if I want something like this and I basically click onto this image, you can see a bunch of new options is going to pop up. I can set this as a page background and it'll size this so that it's a nice fit for my page background. The third way and probably a really cool way to do this is if like, again, I go back to the homepage, I scroll all the way down to text to images and I go ahead and type in what I want. I really like this one, it's nice and clean and we can also change a lot of the other effects. So with this now in as our base, I'm gonna go back and then I'm actually going to set this as the background just so it's always at the background and we don't need to modify it. So most of the time you guys will probably be working from a template, but just to show you guys the range of features, we're actually gonna go in and do this from scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it a little bit of text. So we can either add our own text just by clicking the top there, or we can use something like their templates down here. So for example, if I want to add something like this all the way over here, it will have the various elements in here all imported to me. You can see that there's text in here, but there's also stars, so it's not all the same thing. This is what we call a group. And a group is all these elements, but you can edit them at the same time. To ungroup this, we have to right click on it, and then we can go ahead and ungroup. Now you can see that it's spread into many, many different elements. So I'm gonna hit Control Z to actually undo most of this, because it was working pretty well in a group itself. Now to edit a group, all we have to do is double click and we can edit the text. So for example, if I want to maybe delete the well and then we just keep the done and then we change this into something like uh, good and then we size this so that it makes sense. So let's do like that and then we'll make this 
go up a little bit by using the free transform tools. If I double click into the text again, you can see that this is very common with any text that you're gonna be encountering within Adobe Express. You're gonna see Adobe recommending some text that might work great for you here. I actually really do like this one, so I'm gonna actually keep this one. Here you have all of the standard text editing options like size, bold, underline, adjustify. Uh, you can also change the spacing between the lines. But what I really like as really cool is you can make these into circles, you can make these into arches, you can make these into bows or bow, bow. <laughs> Anyways. Um, I'm gonna make this and keep this on default. You can also adjust the color of the text. So if I double click into the actual text and then I change the fill, these are the recommended colors that it gives you based on the background, but I can also use the eyedropper tool to sample colors in the painting. So I'm gonna use more of a light color there and I'm actually gonna do the same thing over here onto the secondary text. So again, sample, boom, white text. I'm also going to give this a little bit of a shadow. So I'm gonna go down and I'm going to give it a shadow. Now, the one that I like to use the most is probably the lift one, but play around with this one until you find one that makes sense. The color probably shouldn't be black because my image background is very dark. Uh, so we'll give it more of a white background. Now that one doesn't look too good. So let's play with around with some of the other ones to find one that looks a lot better. I think I like this one. It's just like a very simple glow. Something else that we can do is give it a shape. So if we want it to have an outline, in this case, I don't really think we do, but you can kind of see what it does, right? It's gonna give it a nice outline and some nice effects to the actual text itself. I don't really want this. I wanna keep this nice and clean, so I'm not gonna add that. Uh, but the last thing we can do is we can actually add animations to this. So that it can actually come into the page, it can slide in, it can bounce in. So if I go in, it's gonna give me option for in, looping, and out. In meaning what it is going to be when it comes into the image. So here, let's do something like a bungee. Looping means what it's going to do the entire time while it's in the frame. So if I give it a breathing effect, you can see that it's gonna shrink up and down, bigger and smaller the entire time. And for our out effect, let's give it something like a shrink where it just kind of disappears out of the page. Now here you can see that a timeline has popped up. And what this means is that it's telling you, hey, there's something moving in this image. We can play this timeline to preview what our text looks like in this page itself. We can also turn on the layer timing. You can see that this is the effect that I'm working with. And we can also adjust the length of this so that it doesn't happen right away, but maybe it comes in a little bit later in the frame itself. So if I play this again, you can see it doesn't happen. And then it drops in a little bit later when we actually want it to come in. Hey, crayon me here. What's going on, everybody? I'm gonna take this chance to tell you guys about our website where we have some really cool resources and you can learn a lot more similar to what this tutorial is teaching you on there. So check it out. Okay, now that we're good with the text, we can also add some images. So if I go over to media, I can, let's say I want to add a paintbrush. So I can go ahead and go into search photos and I'll search up paintbrush hit enter and it's gonna bring up a bunch of paintbrushes. You can see that some of these are free, some of them are not, the ones with the crowns are not free. And this one looks pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and just select this. Now, unfortunately it does have a background that we don't really want, but after Adobe analyzes this image, which might take a while, we can simply click remove background and it will actually do that for us really quickly. Now you can see that we have now a brush we can move this by going to the transform tools, making it bigger, smaller. We can also clip it by using this. We can also restore the image to before we clopped it at any time and it'll bring the image back. So it doesn't really fit the picture frame at all. It doesn't fit it very good. Maybe we want it somewhere here, but we want it behind the text. So we're actually gonna go over to the different layers and we're gonna drag this underneath the text so that the text is above our paintbrush. Let's say we want the paintbrush to be a little bit more subtle in color. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nice effect. So we can change it to grayscale, we can darken it, we can go to the tint, but I'm gonna give it a dual tone, which is exactly what I think we want in this case. Now we don't want something that's super strong, so we'll probably play around with it until we find something that we like. I'm actually gonna make this a custom 
and then I'm gonna make the highlights the text color, like that. And then the shadows we're going to make into something like that. So boom, that matches pretty well, I would say. We can also adjust things like the contrast, brightness, highlight, shadows, everything that we can do in Photoshop seems to work in Adobe Express and they made it a lot more user-friendly, which is super cool. You can also give this the same type of animation that we did with the text. So for example, if I want this to maybe flicker in and then we want this to have a wiggle effect, the out could also be a shrink then we can play this entire timeline and you can see what it looks like. That looks a little bit hectic, so I might have to adjust that. After we're happy with what we have here, we can also do other things like resize this. For example, if we want this to be more of a video format, I can select the video and change this so that the image is stretched and it'll resize to what we want it to be. I'm gonna make this go back. We can also change the theme so we can browse different colors and change different colors based on what is recommended to us. So these are a bunch of different colors that we can play around with. We can also go ahead and change the background color. Now with this one, it's going, not going to matter too much because our background color is an image. But if you're using a lot of the different templates, you can change the color to one that you actually like. So we have everything where we kind of want it to be. Now, I want something like a brush stroke or paint element to really just give this the final touch that it needs to have a cohesive feeling. So we're gonna go down to elements and I'm actually going to use a brush stroke. So here you can see that it's suggesting me some brush strokes and some other elements. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click view all. You can also change things like the background and you can also go to very simple shapes. You can go to icons, but I'm going to go ahead and use some of the brushes here. So I did like one down here where it says snow, but I think it makes a pretty good brush pattern over here. So if I just go ahead and make this a little bit bigger and you know put it somewhere here and make sure that it is behind our brush, you can see that it looks pretty good. It gives that really painterly effect, which is what I want. Now I can also give it you know the different coloring. So maybe I wanna change it to something like this. And yeah, that looks pretty good. It really highlights the brush that is there. So maybe we'll move the brush a little bit. And we created that super fast. Now, all you have to do is go ahead and download. Um, now, because I have animations in here, you're gonna be downloading an MP4. But if you don't want animations, you just want it to look like this. You can also just do PNGs um, as well as JPEGs. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this to wherever I want. I can also just simply share it to collaborators. I can publish it to the web. Can schedule a post to my social media, which is super useful. But yeah, that is how you basically export. But yeah, that's it. We have a super beautiful image that we created in a very short amount of time. This is perfect for anything that we want to do really fast, but also look really, really good, especially if you use any templates. And that's it. That is all we have for today. If you learned anything new, don't hesitate to leave that like and subscribe. Leave down in the comments what was the most useful for you today and what you would like to see in the future. With that said, check out our website for really cool design layouts. And I'll see you guys in the next one.